So first of all, if you, if you all guys, welcome to you guys from Canada. Uh, I think, and thank you for uh, letting start start a Latam conference to to inviting us. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to say if you if you come to a startup conference in Chile, uh, I think you you need to you know more about startup Chile. Uh, so uh, that's I think it's, it's super important for you to know. Uh, what we're doing in Startup Chile is actually really simple. We are socially, socially changing a country through entrepreneurship. We think it's a, it's a faster and short way of changing the culture of a country. So basically, uh, the best way of understanding uh, how or what is Startup Chile is, is understand how or why Startup Chile is so well renowned around the globe. Uh, and there's, I would say, two important things. The first one is like we are, we are disrupting within the government. I am a public employee uh, and all the team is a public employee. So we are 100% pure government. Um, and, and the good thing about that is like when you relate the startup with the government, uh, you automatically uh, make a government look cooler. You know? <laughs> and that's what's happened actually. Um, so what is Startup Chile? We attract entrepreneurial talent from all over the world, including Chileans, and we uh, give, them, give them the opportunity to develop their businesses in Chile, base, uh, setting bases in Chile, using as a platform. And our main mission and, and obsession, actually, is to transform Chile in the innovation platform of Latin America, which I will tell you more about it, and you will know that we are kind of doing that. Another thing that uh, why Startup Chile is so well renowned is because four years ago, the government, through the initiative uh, uh, of a, a big entrepreneur in Chile called Nico Chea, had the brilliant idea of giving money for free to foreigners. <laughs> Sounds kind of crazy. Even if it was, it's a public policy. Huh? So Chileans were like, you're crazy. You're giving money to foreigners to start up a company in Chile when there's no startup ecosystem in Chile at all? So it's kind of weird. And the other one is like we were giving one year working visa. So when everyone is once, uh, uh, every country or a few countries were kicking entrepreneurs out because of migratory policies, entre parentheses, US, uh, we were accepting them, open doors for them. You know? uh, so these two things were kind of new for a market and for a government as well. So the first article that we had four years ago was, was an article from, from Forbes. And they came here and said, so, okay, so you're, you're giving visas to foreigners to start up here and, and stay in the States, they're kicking them out. So, so there was like a huge buzz about that. So that generated that everyone started talking about it. Like 2013, we get more than a thousand press coverage. So it was like three times, three coverage a day. In, in media that are not small, you can see The Economist was the biggest one in the end of 2012, um, and, and we, we don't have any marketing budget, so it was kind of huge, and, and we still don't. Don't think that the new administration is giving more money. Or something. So what's really happening? So all of these, the benefits that we give, uh, this innovative uh, you know, way of, of giving, um, giving uh, what the entrepreneur needs, so what's really happening? That after four years, we have received more than, now we are reaching the 15,000 applicants. So 15,000 companies have applied to Startup Chile. We have selected 950 already. We're about to select uh, 100 more from 75 countries, 75 different countries. We have countries like Kazakhstan, and we have countries, of course, the, mo the five most important ones. Five most important ones are, of course, Chile, United States, the second, second and first, we're kind of fighting. And uh, the third one is, is India, Argentina, then Brazil, and the, the fifth one, I bet you know, Canada, of course. We have a few, uh, a lot of entrepreneurs from Canada selected. We want to have more, so if you want to tweet that, it would be amazing. Uh, another good thing uh, that uh, Startup Chile has and, and, and it's happening now, is that we have no requirements besides you don't need to be older than two years, the company, of course. <laughs> um, and, and besides that, you, 
you, uh, you need to have a global impact startup. Simple, very simple. So with those requirements, we start receiving different stages companies. We start receiving different industries companies. We start receiving different experienced founders. Yeah? So we have founders like, we have a founder who, who wore the WordPress photo two times, a German guy, and he came to start up Chile to do a copyright startup, which is doing really good, really well. And, they, and we have another founders that sold their companies to Amazon in $50 million, and they want to come and, and do another startup, so they came to start up Chile as well. So it's a variety of entrepreneurs that, in, in, in general, create like a huge collaboration with each other. So we generate this whole community, and we do activities with each other that the only thing, that the only goal is create value, nothing else. So what we're looking for, that this is the question that I, that I usually get when we have the application process, what you guys are looking for? And in the end, we're looking for, and there's no better way to, to tell you this with examples. This is Rafael Lang, he's the co-founder. He co-founded a company called Baby V with a Chilean called Camilo Navalón. What they do is like they, they, they replicate the first two weeks of the mother with, with, the, with the recent born child uh, when the baby is confined to an incubator. So they use that kind of turtle to replicate that time uh, because it's so important the first two weeks uh, and actually ties dies because they don't have those two, first two weeks with the mom that they use it this way. They, they have won a lot of competitions. They, they are selling their first prototypes now and they're really nailing a huge, huge problem. So this global impact, problem solvers, that's what we like. Hardworking entrepreneurs, I think there's, everyone knows here that no, there's no magic recipe uh, besides hard and smart working entrepreneurs. She's Samantha Snape, she came here, worked sun by sun, it's, it's absolutely amazing. She's from Houston. She works in NSA before Startup Chile, and she was working in the, in the largest and lower cost uh, 3D printers all over the world. Uh, she, she had a great Kickstarter campaign, and now she's selling all over the states their great 3D printers. We want entrepreneurs to experiment, test, eager to experiment and test and prototype. This is a prototype, actually. This is a, this is a cockroach, you know? So entrepreneurs, uh, we were doing neuroscience to school, start prototyping neuroscience with cockroach. I know it's kind of cruel, but startup, yeah? Determined to build value. Entrepreneurs that are from the valley, for example, this guy, and decided to come to Startup Chile to build value, to build their companies with more value, and then coming back to global markets. Then can come back to the Silicon Valley. And I will, I will tell you further because say, so what's the point of bringing entrepreneurs and then they can come back to their countries? I will tell you more about that in a few slides. So he's the founder of Urex, a company that raised more than $15 million last year. He came here, he pivoted after three months, he went to YC and they raised the money. So those kind of entrepreneurs we, we, we love. Yeah? They want to come here to build value and then come back. Developing new markets, this is Go Place It. I bet that Chileans, entrepreneur Chileans here know about this startup. They are disrupting a, a traditional market which was like the search engine of real estate properties. And, and what they do is really simple. They, they change it, they sweep, they, they, they change how this all of search engine works and then uh, and they do, let, they let the, the properties find you more than you find the property. And they raise, they, they raise a, a million dollars from Chilean funding, and they're growing really, really fast in Latin America, specifically in Colombia, uh, Mexico, Peru as well, and, and of course Chile. They're Chileans as well. So why are they coming? That's another question. So why are all of these people coming, all of these 950 startups from more than 70 countries coming to Chile? And the, the answer is it's, it's, it's kind of simple, but now we are entitled and we have the honor to say that we are the biggest community and most diverse community of entrepreneurs in the world. And, and that's not a lie. It's, a, it's simply you cannot find another incubator, accelerator with this amount of startups and the, this diversity. The second one is like we try to give all the things that an entrepreneur needs when it comes to an ecosystem like this. So we give them $20 million 
we give them one year working visa, we, we set them with everything that they need in just one or two weeks. So in two days, they have a Chilean ID. In one week, they have a bank account. There's a few entrepreneurs from Startup Chile in, in the back, so if you want to ask if it's true, it's true. Um, also, we have access to Latin American market. We have an acceleration process, and, and we also want people that want to be part of this history making, you know, uh, a startup from the government. The third one is like we have follow on opportunities. We are inside an ecosystem that it works, that have incubators that, that can give you the funds that you need to scale further after Startup Chile. And, uh, and, and we're working on giving much more possibilities in this area, creating the conditions of, an e of a healthy ecosystem after Startup Chile. It's a fair deal. I think for all entrepreneurs, it's a fair deal. But that's not all of it. We, we don't give just free money. We don't give just one year working visa because we, we like it. Entrepreneurs have the chance to inspire others. It's, and, and, and this is a key part of Startup Chile. I started the, present, the presentation say, saying that we want to change socially Chile. So what we do is like we give them all of these things to the entrepreneurs with one thing that we, that we ask back. And it's like they need to return to Chile, uh, giving the chance to other entrepreneurs to learn what they have learned. You know? This is a great example, and I will keep doing examples. This Komal Dadlani is a Chilean, Chilean Indian, but Chilean. She, she, she born here. She, she was mentored by two or three entrepreneurs from Startup Chile. She participated in a Startup Weekend program that was organized for the Startup Chile alumni here in Santiago. She won the Startup, the startup Weekend, then applied to Startup Chile. She won the Startup Chile. And now she's doing great. She, she was in Silicon Valley for two weeks. She was a finalist on the, on the, DSI, on the Intel Challenge. Um, she raised money for the, for, for the, uh, with the most important biotechnologies in Chile, Luis Pablo Valenzuela. Uh, so she's doing great. This is a great example of what we want to achieve with the entrepreneurs that, bring, that, we, that, we, that we have here in Chile. Tim Marzullo, this is the same guy from the cockroach, but now with real people. I think you can notice who is the foreigner. Thank you. So Tim, what he's doing is a win-to-win -win situation. So he, 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 of course, is helping us socially to change Chile. But in the process, he's scaling his business through Chile. He's doing neuroscience for, for kids in public schools in all Latin America. They raised $2 million in the States, and they came back to Chile, and they're starting to do neuroscience in public schools. How cool is that? Jose Albornoz, exporting talent. All of these opportunities, the interaction that we create between Chileans and startups that we bring from outside and Chile as well, create the opportunity to find right talent. This is Jojo Albornoz. This guy worked, uh, met the founder of Synergos. He sold his company to Amazon. He came to Startup Chile and found the Jojo. He hired him, and now he's living in Berlin with him with a great, great life experience, and, and he's only 18 years old. Has it work? This is a big question, but I think it has a big answer as well. The answer is yes, a hell yes. And, and the thing is, like, more Chileans know about entrepreneurship. And you can say, Chile is a small country, but it's a country. We're changing a country, okay? So we have reached more than 180,000 attendees like this event in Chile since we started. We have done more than 3,700 activities all over Chile. So this is kind of traction. And Chile has posi positioned itself as an innovation entrepreneur hub. In the world. We, we don't say it. It's Opino, we are the representative, representative of MIT licensing in Latin America. They did a, 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 a study a few, a few last year, actually. And we was named the number five because of its ecosystem. That was our competitive advantage, ecosystem. Startup Genome, name us number 20. If we take all the North American cities, we are like number 14. Of course, there's, if, if we don't, if we don't, uh, we are not able to bring the best startups, we cannot 
impact in the right way uh, a country. Huh? So the business is important for us as well. This number, these numbers are not updated. We have, re we have passed the $100 million raise it. 50% of our companies are still working in these four years, or, or at least not dying. Uh, we have acquired 10 companies acquired, it's not updated. Uh, the last company acquired was, was last week, Flipter, was acquired by, by One Word Online. Um, $40 million in the last six months uh, of selling, uh, companies are selling. So are pretty good numbers. And the entrepreneurial ecosystem has changed uh, and it's not going, going back, you know. One good sign about this is like the newspaper is starting to create a special sections about entrepreneurship and technology. Four years ago, it was nothing about that. Nothing, believe me, nothing. Uh, and now, I don't know, the, the person in charge of communication with Startup Chile received like every single day requests for the newspaper. Okay, so you have a cool project. What is Startup Chile doing now? Who entrepreneur came here? And I don't know, and we, we had an entrepreneur who was like a, the grand, grandson of John Lennon or something. We put it in a press. Things like that happen. International organizations about entrepreneurship are landing in Chile after understanding that we have a healthy ecosystem here, like TED, like Startup Green, like Girls in Tech, Startup Weekend, Lean Startup Machine, you name it, a lot of them. More than 10 investment funds have been created in the last five, four years. Uh, this is the more impor important one. They're all starting to, to invest little by little. You know how investors are? Sorry, guys. Uh, and universities, of course, are starting to put uh, entrepreneurship and startup classes inside their curriculums. In these same buildings, there's, a, there's entrepreneurs doing classes, entrepreneurs from Startup Chile doing classes. Yeah? And that's amazing. I don't want to bore you anymore, but I want to take this opportunity to say that we are closing an application process this Tuesday. So if you want to apply, and if you want to change a country, and if you want to be an agent of change more than an entrepreneur, or besides a being an entrepreneur, uh, please join us. And for the investors that want to be entrepreneurs again, please join us. Uh, thank you very much for the time, and, and the doors of Startup Chile are always open to you guys. Thank you. We have time for questions? Plenty of time for questions. Plenty of time. Okay, cool. Hey guys, don't be shy. Who came up with this idea? Uh, Nicolas Chea. He's an entre Chilean entrepreneur. He was finishing his MBA in Stanford degree. Uh, and when we finished it, he realized that then the foreign entrepreneurs that would finish in the, in the MBA needed to come back to their countries because the visa expired. Uh, and the, the government hired him to be an innovation consulting of the government, the current government. And the first idea mixed it with the need that the, that the ecosystem in Chile was inexistent. And in the entrepreneurs of Chile were thinking locally more than globally. Uh, he came with this idea of bringing foreigners from outside and then everything explodes. I have a question. Can you um, speak a bit more? Thank you for the presentation. That was awesome. I'm over here. Where? Where over are you? Here. Where are you? Um, can you just uh, speak a bit more about kind of the follow-up infrastructure or ecosystem you're building for post-startup Chile? I know you're speaking about all the incubators and accelerators. And uh -huh. congratulations on what you've achieved. It's been just tremendous. The, the world's you. been watching. And Thank I you. know it's been a labor of love for you and your team. So good on you. Um, you. But if you can just tell us a bit more about that and how the rest of us from outside of Chile can help. Great, uh, good question. Actually, there's a few things that we're doing in that. I think the, the challenge for Startup Chile after the four years when we, when we create all the vast and, uh, and we, were, we were popular but nobody, nobody was understanding how to evaluate Startup Chile and if it was good or bad or whatever, but there was a positive feeling about it, you know? Um, but I think the main challenge is, is, to, is that the entrepreneurs that come to Startup Chile, they're foreigners, at least they have the possi possibility after Startup Chile to stay. 
We have a percentage today that is not low, but it can be much better. We have 15% of the startups, the foreign startups stay after Startup Chile. Uh, and we really want to increase that number. But we cannot force that number to increase. So what, what our goal today is to make the conditions better for them to stay. One of the things is giving them access to, to funding, early stage funding, as, after the pre-seed that we give. The other thing is connect them, connect them with big corporations in Chile that hopefully ca have Latin American reach. That's the second thing. And the third one is like insert them in the ecosystem so, they, so when they leave, at least they can base operation incorporate in Chile. So found, found a founder, a co-founder, or hire people, and at least uh, they can set operations in Chile. Those three things are the ones that are wor we are working on. Yeah. One more, maybe? Español or English? Como tú quieras. Español. Yeah. Um, sorry if English spoken. Thank you. Translator. Um, quería preguntar, eh, ¿cuál es el punto de concentrar eh, el apoyo más a gente extranjera que venga a hacer un startup en Chile y no enfocarse en los startups locales? Esto lo pregunto porque en otros países normalmente también privilegian a los locales y es más difícil uno como chileno sí. ir a emprender a otro lugar. Por sí. eso la pregunto. Buenísimo. Gracias. ¿Te respondo en español o en inglés? Eh, you decide. Eh, ok, cool. Um, so, it's a, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, first thing is like the, fir the, the, the most, the, most uh, the biggest startups that we have are from Chile. So, the percentage is like 25 to 20 between the states and Chile. In the last batch, we, have, we, have, we selected 30% Chileans and 20 or 18% from the US. Good thing about that is our selection and evaluation processes outside of Chile is based in San Francisco as you noodle, actually. You noodle, guys. Torsten. <laughs> <laughs> and Teresita as well. Teresita, say. And is Daniel no, is not here? Okay. Uh, so the good thing about that is like without putting any hands inside, the startup quality of the Chileans have to increase, has increased in these four years. That's a great news more than thinking why are we bringing foreigners and giving money to Chile. The startups are growing their quality. That's amazing. That's the first, first part of the answer. The second part of the answer is like we represent like the 3.6% of all the budget that Corfo, the Innovation Entrepre uh, Entrepreneurship Agency has. All of the other funds go to the Chileans directly. So it depends on the goal and the objectives that a program from the government has. And this program is a global one. So that's the thing. No problem. Cool? Yeah. No, uh, so I have, I, have a, I have a follow up question. Um, I know a, a number of, of entrepreneurs have gone through Startup Chile, and, and one of the criticisms they have, especially people who are not from Latin America, is that it, it, it's treated more like a, a way of getting reimbursed for specific expenses as opposed to an investment. And I was wondering if, if you could comment, this is a couple years old information, but the, the way in which you submit receipts and get reimbursement as opposed to just this is the cash and the investment. Yeah, through it. We, and change, we changed that already. Yeah, OK. Sorry. <laughs> Good. <laughs> no, we're, yeah. we're giving the money up front now. It take a while. It take a while because it's government, but we're improving that. OK. Thank you. Oh, final question. Sorry. My name is Ilaria, and I'm part of Startup Chile. I just wanted to thank Sebastian and all the Startup Chile community because they gave us a great opportunity to get to know more about the South American market. Uh, Startup Chile has a, an amazing network of uh, mentors, and uh, all the staff has been very helpful for us. So thank you, for, 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 thank you Sebastian. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ilaria.